Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details with the world's most swirliest Porsche 911 restoration. This is going to be a 5 part super in depth detailing series all about detailing this 911 Carrera 4S from start to finish. So make sure you buckle your YouTube seatbelts and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss all future uploads. Turn those notification bell icons on and let's get right into the detail. The first stage is to get the Porsche cleaned and decontaminated in order to get it ready for correcting the rather neglected and swilled and scratched paintwork. On arrival the 911 Carrera 4S wasn't in the dirtiest condition but I can assure you that the car is certainly not at a detailer's standard. Cars like these then you do normally find that they have been cared for to some level as the owners do like them clean and shiny, but what they are generally missing out on is a professional detail. I will show you the extent of the damage to the paintwork from all of the cheap car washes and incorrect machine polishing techniques that the car has been subjected to over the past 15 years. The car is a 2004 model by the way. Detailing a vehicle should always start with decontaminating the wheels because these areas are the dirtiest areas on a vehicle and we always use separate cleaning implements for these areas. 95% of the contamination found on wheels is going to be iron fallout or metal or ferrous particles, also known as brake dust. It certainly makes sense to use a specific product to remove those iron particles, which is an iron fallout remover. My personal favourite product for this is Built Hamber Corosol. I'll apply this product liberally to the wheels and then agitate the product with my various wheel cleaning implements. At this point, whilst attending to the dirtiest areas on the vehicle, there is no point risking water spotting on the rest of the car by giving it a full on pre rinse, because the wheels, tyres, and arches are more than likely going to take up the first 30 minutes of the detail. As you've already seen, I have begun the wheel cleaning process with giving all areas a thorough pre rinse with the Kranzel K7, which is simply going to remove the loose stuff. Next task is to agitate the iron fallout product with my various wheel cleaning implements. Please note at this stage we are going to be taking the wheels off to give them a full detail and ceramic coat so at this point I am just giving the wheels an initial thorough clean. The inner barrels of the wheels do need further attention, possibly with the use of a machine polisher because they are heavily stained. wheels are given a final rinse to remove the product and grime before conducting this same process on all four corners of the car. The first stage for the bodywork is quite simply to give it a thorough pressure rinse to remove the loose stuff. Please ignore the water beading which I'm pretty sure is from Auto Glim Super Resin Polish by all of the built up polish stains in the cracks and crevices of the bodywork. This car has recently been purchased by my client and the valet's trick of using a heavy filling polish to mask a bunch of the swirl marks has certainly been carried out on this vehicle. So even though the car is beading the water nicely, it doesn't mean that the paintwork is looking good underneath. The next stage for the exterior is to apply a thick blanket of snow foam which is going to soften the more stubborn road grime. The snow foam is also going to sink into all of the gaps and crevices of the vehicle to help with cleaning them up. Built Hamber Auto Foam isn't a pH neutral snow foam so you need to be careful with it in the sun i.e. don't let it bake on. Whilst the snow foam works its magic on the exterior, I take a Swiss Vax detail brush and agitate the foam into all of the hard to reach areas. It's unlikely that the wash mitt is going to reach these areas, so why not tackle them first with a detail brush? 
There are quite a few intricate and hard to get to areas on the Porsche 911 body shape, so this stage did take me 15 or so minutes to complete, but don't forget, it's all about the details. Detail brush stage complete and a second layer of snow foam applied in the meantime because the first layer was drying out. The snow foam is thoroughly pressure washed off the vehicle from the roof down. By completing this initial pre-wash stage is quite simply going to leave us with a cleaner surface before making direct contact with the wash mitt, which is going to dramatically reduce the chance of inflicting any further swirl damage. The two bucket washing method, obligatory for all detailers, is going to get the vehicle safely washed. In terms of the paintwork for the 911 Carrera 4S and with it being a desirable sports car, that the two bucket wash method is a must. Perhaps if this was a daily beater or a family wagon, then a single bucket washing method would suffice, but not for this type of vehicle, no matter how bad the paintwork already is. The two buckets are going to help us to maintain a clean washing bucket for the cleaning of the vehicle and the rinse bucket will be the one with the trap dirt particles inside. We clean the vehicle from the top down and regularly rinse the wash mitt out in the rinse bucket and then reload with fresh shampoo from the wash bucket. This is where using the detail brush earlier on makes our life a little easier because we've already cleaned those harder to get to areas. We can now concentrate on cleaning the big open panels with our wash mitt. I'm using Valet Pro Concentrated Car Shampoo which does not contain any gloss enhancers or wax inhibitors, because at this stage we only want to get the vehicle clean and begin the degreasing process. We certainly don't want to put any artificial layers of protection on the car. A secondary wash mitt is used for the lowest areas including the side skirts underneath the front and rear bumpers and the painted inner arch lips, simply to ensure that our primary wash mitts stay in better condition for longer. When the complete vehicle has been washed, it's time to rinse it off from the roof down. Thank you. 
Step 1 decontamination for the bodywork is the tar deposit removal stage, where we use a rather strong chemical called tar and glue remover. My personal favourite for this is called Auto Smart TARDIS, simply down to it being very effective and safe. Treat one panel at a time by spraying the product directly onto the surface, then wipe over with a microfiber towel. If the panels are heavily contaminated, then two hits are recommended, just to make sure that all of those little black blobs are removed. I like to go over the entire vehicle including the windows and plastics, pay special attention to the lower down areas and don't forget to inspect your results, to ensure a thorough tar deposit removal process. Removing tar deposits before claying is vital, if you don't remove 99% of the tar deposits then if they are picked up in a clay bar, this is one of the biggest causes for excessive marring in the claying process. If you do miss any tar deposits and then pick them up in your clay bar and if you are using a white or light coloured clay bar then you are going to know about it. Remove those tar deposits first and really do make sure that you remove those tar deposits first. When the complete exterior has been wiped down, rinse it off from the roof down. You will find that there is still some product residue left on the bodywork so this final rinse is going to ensure that all of that is removed before moving to the next stage. The iron fallout stage which for me is one of the more fun parts of detailing, particularly with light coloured cars or heavily contaminated cars, because the colour change of this product when it chemically reacts with the iron particles is rather fascinating, but stinky. Iron fallout contamination mainly settles on your vehicle's paintwork from the brakes of your own vehicle or even those travelling in front of you. This contamination is also an airborne type of contamination which is given off by trains, so particularly if you live near a railway line, I'd expect not only the sides of your car to be heavily contaminated, but also the roof and the bonnet. A tip for using iron fallout products successfully on your own vehicle is make sure that you do it in the shade. If you use this product in the sun, then it will dry out very quickly, making it very ineffective. The longer this product has to work on the vehicle, then the more iron fallout that it will be able to react with. If the sun does come out whilst completing this stage at the unit, I will back the car into the unit to allow it enough time to work. Iron fallout isn't a cheap product, so you only want to do this stage once. Also, by doing the iron fallout stage correctly will mean that there will be less contamination to come off whilst clay barring, which is never a bad thing. If you do each stage correctly within the cleaning and decontamination stages will make the following stages easier. After completing the iron fallout stage, you will need to spend quite a bit of time pressure rinsing the vehicle to remove the product residue and contamination. This product does have a habit of soaking into all of the gaps and crevices of the vehicle, so the next step that I'm about to show you, in my opinion, is vital. After the initial rinsing of the iron fallout product, which I would imagine would have taken you at least 10 minutes, I would recommend applying a final layer of snow foam. This is going to allow the product to sink into those same gaps and crevices that the iron fallout product would have soaked into, and in return, when the snow foam is pressure rinsed off, all of the iron fallout product will have been removed. If I didn't do this last snow foam wash, then if I were to have taken the vehicle straight inside the unit, there would be iron fallout product puddles all over the floor. We certainly don't want to be machine polishing any iron fallout contamination around the paintwork, so this last snow foam wash is very beneficial. I always do it.
with the chemical decontamination stages taken care of, the last mechanical or labour intensive stage is the clay bar stage. This little piece of automotive clay, when used with a clay loop, is going to remove every last other type of contamination that may still be on the paintwork. I use the Meguiar's clay bar and Meguiar's last touch spray detailer diluted 3 to 1 as the clay loop. The clay bar is gently glided over every centimetre of paintwork whilst paying special attention to the texture of the paint. I want to make sure that all areas of paintwork are nice and smooth and ultimately contaminant free. I clay bar the paintwork, windows, headlights and rear lights and everywhere else that may be either painted or clear coated. This final decontamination stage using a traditional clay bar usually takes me around one and a half hours to complete. Quite simply because I want the paintwork to be completely free of all types of contamination so I do take my time doing it. When the entire vehicle is being clayed, I dry the bodywork with a JP Details microfiber drying towel. These towels are super absorbent, super soft and fluffy. One towel dries one car with ultimate paintwork safety in the forefront of their design. These towels are available on the JP Details online store and with only 15 or so remaining, you'll have to be quick while stocks last. They make drying automotive paintwork a breeze, which in today's video is going to finish off the wet work nicely. One of the final preparation stages is to use the Metrovac Master Blaster to remove the trap water and to eliminate the chance of any drips. I'm using the 4 horsepower single engine version and I would highly recommend getting one for all of you detailing nutters out there.
The plates on the portion need to come off to allow us to fully machine polish behind them. I'm going to firstly remove the screws and then heat the sticky pads up with a heat gun. It does help to spray a bit of tar and glue remover behind the plate while simultaneously heating them up and then eventually the glue should separate and you can peel the plate off. Depending how obsessive the previous owner or dealership was with the sticky tape will determine how long it will take you to remove those sticky strips. Once again using the heat gun and periodically spraying some tar and glue remover whilst peeling back the sticky tape is going to work wonders. It will be a shame not to be able to cut and polish this entire plate section so they obviously need to be removed. It can sometimes be a bit of a finicky process removing these strips of tape depending on how long they've been there. So with a bit of patience and the correct tools is going to get them sorted within good time. I'm going to draw this video to a close with an inspection of the paintwork to show you what I'll be up against in the next part of the series. In short, we have heavy swore marks over the entire bodywork and a complete set of holograms to contend with. The condition of this paintwork is typical from a 15 year old vehicle that's never been detailed before. This car is going to be undergoing a complete transformation in condition, which is going to take me in the region of 50 hours to complete. It's going to make for some incredibly insightful YouTube content on watching the Porsche get restored back to an impeccable standard. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss lots of future content, including the five part series about the restoration of this Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. Be sure to check out the JP Details online store for a few products that have been featured in today's video and why not check me out on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details. Links to the online store and my social medias in the description box below and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.